On today's episode, we're going to ask, how can you use a cheap compressor to glue your mix? Here we go. This is a nerdy one, everyone. Today, we are exploring the four-track working man's version of Andrew Sheps's rear bus compression technique. Andrew Sheps is a multi-Grammy winning mixing engineer and producer with a lot of presence online. You can't be into audio and not know his famous beard and long hair. Uh, he's definitely one smart dude. Side note, the technique is strangely called rear bus, which I always kind of wondered, why is it called rear bus? Well, he came up with this technique while working on a quad mixing console. And you might be like, huh? Quad. Everyone knows stereo, or at least I assume you do, uh, left and right. All music you hear is coming out of a left speaker and a right speaker. Most people listen in headphones. And all music you've heard for the last 40 years is mixed with that in mind. Uh, but there was a time period where they thought, ooh, Let's try quad mixing. So it was front, left and right, and rear, left and right. By the time that Andrew Sheps ended up working on this console, this quad console, quad was already out of the picture. But Sheps was very clever, so he realized the rear bus wasn't being utilized, and he was able to make use of it with this technique. <laughs> we're talking about is basically a parallel compression for your whole mix, usually minus the drums. Sometimes you can sneak them in there, but that's the Shep's uh, rear bus technique. Enter the DBX 163X. I'm showing some B-roll, baby. I got this used for $50 and it's definitely seen better days. I uh, probably could have gotten it for less and should have. Uh, I definitely need some deoxit, which is on its way in the mail right now. Uh, looks like it was kept in a, a shitty rehearsal space. But anyway, this DBX-163, they've been around since the early 90s, and it's a very simple, easy to use compressor. As you can see, it has one fader, but they sound really good on, on bass and kick drum and things like that. So I was wondering, uh, how it would sound in this technique that we're going to show you today. I'm working on a mix right now on the Tascam. Uh, this track is nowhere near finished. In fact, it is just the rhythm track at the moment. No melodies. Uh, let's change the camera angle right now to give you a better look at what's going on here. Okay, I know it's uh, kind of a weird angle, but I just need you to be able to see what my hands are doing. And I ain't got one of them fancy uh, camera holders that's totally 90 degrees. Uh, maybe I should get one. Anyway, here we go. Okay, like I said, right now I'm working on uh, a mix and we have drums here in track four. We have uh, guitar right, uh, which is slightly different from guitar on the left, and a bass part here on channel two. And the bass has uh, overdubbed octave up guitar. You guys know that I love that sound. Let me, let's just hear the mix. Uh, with no compression added. Cool. What I've got going on is the, I'm using the effects send on this machine going out into the compressor. And right now, as you can see, the effects master is all the way down. Um, you know, so I can bl send as much of this mix into the compressor as I want to. And the mix is full left guitar all the way, full right guitar all the way, bass most of the way, and drums a teeny, teeny bit. Uh, I can show you what that sounds like soloed here, and it's going to, uh, I'm going to mess with these levels so you can hear how the compressor is behaving totally in solo. 
Pretty neat, huh? Okay, that was cool. So the compressor doesn't have the flavor of an 1176 style compressor, so cranking it doesn't really give me that sound. Uh, now we can blend it into the mix. I don't want to upset the stereo image. Uh, when I blend it in, it's going to be pretty subtle. So again, let me, let's hear what it sounds like. All right, here we go. Okay, that was the uh, using the parallel compression. So in order for you to really, really hear the difference, I'm going to toggle between having the compression on and off. And I'm going to easily dial it in uh, with this effects master knob. I wish I could just toggle it on, off and on, but honestly, I can't do that very easily with this setup. So, but this completely off will be off. And then I'm gonna dial it to 12 o'clock, which is where I, I liked the blend. So again, let's see what that sounds like, starting with the compression off. So you can really, so you can hear the difference. That's what we're, that's what we're going to do here. Ah. Pretty simple, right? It's that simple. Parallel compression on a four track. I really like the subtle glue quality to this technique, and I definitely have used it in the box in Logic on more elaborate mixes. I uh, think it sounds really cool. I think it sounds really good with an 1176. Get a little bit of that that grit, a little bit of that distortion, and then like just just sneak fade it in there and fade it out. Oh, it's great. Anyway, join me next week when I will continue this track and show you the stereo bouncing technique that everyone with four tracks is probably familiar with. Okay? As always, peace and be good to each other. Oh yeah, and don't mind my dirty desk. Sorry.